Hello there and welcome to episode 15 of my tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. In this one I will be tackling the topic of noblemen and also the mayor of the city, which is the first noble title, but I'll be covering the entire nobility thing in this episode because it all follows basically the same principles, so we can cover that just in one episode altogether. So some people in your fortress will have specific needs. We already knew the manager and the bookkeeper, which were the first people that required an office, but the mayor now wants more than the usual person. He is not happy with his quarters, most likely the mayor currently is residing in one of these apartments here. So the first thing that I did here was digging out this area here. I highly recommend for noble people's departments and other areas to floor that entirely. The higher the quality of the floor material, the better. So if you happen to have, for example, a couple of metal bars too many, you can make a high quality floor out of that. But also using, instead of the regular stone, the flux stones, as you see here, they are double the value, is already increasing a, uh, the value by a lot, so already putting in marble blocks instead of phyllite blocks would make a tremendous difference in terms of value. Just one thing should be here mentioned in the stone use tab, you need to allow them to use these stones also in non-economic jobs. So for example, if you would happen to want to build with dolomite, for example, you would need to put that check mark first in, otherwise it will never be used for these jobs, even if it is available. So it's a little bit of a quirk of your dwarfs. They want to conserve valuable boulders. But apart from that, the rule of thumb here is the more valuable the material that you tr throw into the apartment, the better. So this layout works for me like that. The backmost room I always declare as the bedroom. As soon as we have access to bedrooms again, I'll be using the DF hack construction tool here because it can replace a ghost of a bed, which is what we need right now. Then the room after that will be the dining hall. So there will be a table in there and a chair. This is what we need for a dining room. And then we're going to make the office up here. So personally I feel like that's a pretty organic way of dealing with it. But at the end of the day, it's up to you how you want to wire it up. What's important is that you got yourself these um, three room types assigned to your Mayus complex. So let's assign these rooms. We're going to pause the game here for a second. So office goes like there, you create it, and then you select it and assign the mayor to that. These things must be manually assigned because the mayor is not capable of picking these rooms automatically for himself. That's just not happening. So we're now assigning each one of these rooms like that. And when we check back here, Everything here is now, let's see, that's not green, so the value of these rooms is either not high enough or it's the lack of furniture inside there. Either way, if you want to increase the value of these rooms dirty cheap, you just go on here into the engraving area, and if you don't mind dwarven faces all over the ground like here, you can go with the engraving just like that. I'm gonna do it once because I hate how it looks, but this is basically the most effective way to increase the value of your real estate because the engravings multiply the value of the tile they are on. So an engraved gold piece is much more worth than an engraved piece of claystone or whatever. It is also important to note what kind of quality the um, engraving has. When you check out the little box here, 
there's a minus, there's a plus in front of detailed. These icons all stand for different qualities. This, for example, is an extremely high quality, exceptional quality. And here we have this one, superior, fine. And as you see here, these are all different multipliers to the value. And in a nutshell, this way you can increase the value of the um, mayor's apartment tremendously or whatever apartment you want to um, stick and stuff out with that. Now, this is not all though. In here, that red icon shows you that specific furniture items are requested. So, noble people always like to have certain items here. The mayor wants two chests, one cabinet, one weapon rack, one armor stand. Weapon racks and armor stands are the standard thing that noble people want from you. The other pieces of furniture, well, they aren't too hard to piece together. I'm going to delete here a couple of these engraving jobs so I can put down the furniture. So, two chests, easy enough. I'm going to move that. And then we're going to go for the cabinet, and that's going to be used as well. I did order these. Make them out of rock if you want to make it yourself easy, or whatever material floats your boat. Here's the same thing. Every piece of furniture that has a high value is, of course, upgrading the quality of the apartment of the person in question, so it definitely helps. Then we have the armor stand and the weapon rack. These are exclusively made out of, me out of metal and are found in the military tab. So... I ordered these to be made. I don't know what did go, what did go wrong here, but uh, yeah, must be a fuel thing. But I think it is uh, understandable. So armor stand and weapon rack. These are the furniture things that you require for your noble people as well. And when all these things are um, pieced together, they will be finally happy. You can always ignore these requests for their apartments and the like for however long you want to. The only thing that'll happen is they'll grow unhappy. It's basically like a debuff that linges on them because they don't have the necessary decorum in their in their apartment and that makes them unhappy. Basically that summarizes what happens there. So, if you happen to be unable to get that kind of service together right away, you can definitely stall it like that. Now, higher ranking noblemen, they also want a crypt from you. So, a tomb goes pretty simple. You just step up here, place in a door. I don't know where my doors are all at, but... Uh, a door and a burial item, that's a coffin. And then you can just draw a tomb on, uh, on top of that, so it goes like this. And as you see here, we have this now assigned. The only thing though, I highly recommend you to only assign that tomb when you want to assign it to a specific dwarf. It goes like this. We accept it now, and now the next thing we do, we assign it to the mayor directly. Because if the tomb is not assigned to anybody, it will get hogged by somebody at some point, because they will be, uh, they will be just picking them up. Hmm, somebody is going berserk. Well, I didn't pay good attention in this uh, Fortress to Happiness, so I'm the one to blame here. But this is a good opportunity to show you what would have happened if I would have uh, given free that uh, that coffin there. So, while we're at it, if you want to bury somebody efficiently, I want to show you a little thing here. You go into the furniture area and you place down a coffin, a solo coffin. And then you go into the tomb uh, menu and then you paint a tiny tomb on top of that coffin and then the person in question will get buried there automatically just as something to note because it felt like it was a fitting thing just at that moment and one last thing to note about 
the noble people, they issue mandates. Mandates are can be three types of things that I've seen so far. You see here, they can prohibit the uh, trade of something, like we are not allowed to export bucklers anymore. The other thing is they want you to produce something, like they, this case, most likely he'd want us to produce bucklers. And also, sometimes they want a piece of furniture out of a very specific material. That's very rare. It only happened to me once in like 600 hours of Dwarf Fortress, but it can happen. Here's one thing. The um, mandates are depending on the personality of the character. They have preferences here, and I bet my left shoe that this guy likes bucklers somewhere here. He also likes short swords, and this will be another thing he will be regularly asking for to be produced. So, if a mandate is not being fulfilled, that's a crime. And the person issuing, uh, the person not doing this uh, stuff will be found guilty. You will have to have a working justice system for this to be pulled off, but if a mandate isn't uh, fulfilled, the nobleman or mayor in question will take that as a crime against him. And if there will be no justice for that, they will subsequently grow unhappy because of that. So just have something to take a note of. I will go for the justice system later down the road as well. Most of the time you can keep it quite optional though. So what's left to say about noble people is they can be quite a pesky bunch. Sometimes you end up with a nobleman that you just don't want to have to deal with anymore. And the easiest way to get that done is you build a dangerous area and then you assign the nobleman in question into a new, um, into a new squad. So we would be assigning the mayor now as a leader. A sec, maybe I need somebody else. Here, there we go. And now, with that squad, you can also assign them this the the the, the nobleman in question to be stationed somewhere. This is a foolproof way to get them to stand somewhere where you can either drown them or flood them with magma or crush them under a bridge whatever. Sometimes it is important to know that because sometimes you can have noblemen that have requests that are really really annoying to deal with and that's one way to deal with it. Now I don't have much more to say about this topic. It's a very nice uh, little thing that you will need to pay attention to and it's also a really nice source of roleplay for your fortress. So enjoy the noble, but uh, if you don't like them, you can dispose them. Don't be shy of that. One last word about disposing noblemen. If you happen to crush them under a bridge, the interesting thing is nobody will ever notice that they died. So that means this is basically the perfect crime. Now, this is the end of this video. I thank you so much for watching. I haven't made up my mind yet where we will go for the next episode. If there is any topic that you want to see covered, ask away in the comment section. I'll do my best to cover all the topics that I uh, can think of, but maybe I'm missing out on something. Be so kind and let me know. So. Last but not least, go for a thumbs up or a subscription if you'd be so kind, I'd be very happy. And I want to point towards all the other Dwarf Fortress info material that I got in the description box below. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and see you all next time. Bye bye.